We'll call the recommended meeting to order. Are we in compliance with the open meeting law? Yes, we are. Okay. We'll move to the first line item of business. This is bill number Z, as in zebra, uh, 2012-1 for possible action amends the city's official zoning map by changing the zoning des designations of certain parcels of land reflecting and formalizing rezoning applications previously, previously approved by council. Before I turn it over to staff, um, I've been informed that we don't need to open up for public comment. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so. Um, uh, this other trustees are here so they would be able to comment. Then. Correct. Yes, sir. So I'll turn it over to staff. Uh, this is an item that we do uh, periodically, sometimes twice a year, sometimes once every two years. Um, as you know, many uh, rezonings occur, uh, have occurred over the years by means of a resolution of intent. Uh, more recently, not so, but we wait until the uh, property is developed and all the conditions of uh, development have been met, and by then we will have obtained a legal description, and then we just formalize the zoning map to to reflect the uh, the, the formality that those uh, applications, that those parcels are now rezoned to such and such a parcel and those are reflected on the attachment. We recommend approval. Okay. We'll open up for public comment. Anyone wishing to speak on this item, please come forward and state your name for the record. Seeing none, staff? Question. Question. Yes. Will there be any uh, change in property tax classification? Any, uh, any change? I don't know that there's any... Uh, uh, I think property taxes are based on use, but I don't think they're based on the zoning classification per se. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. So we won't unintentionally up zone somebody right. up their taxes because right. of this. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Council? Yes, move for approval. All in favor? Aye. 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 And also for the record, uh, each bill moved out of committee today will be eligible for adoption at the May 16th City Council meeting. Um, Moving on to bill number 2012-20, which uh, for possible action, levies assessment for special improvement district number 1485, Alta Drive, Rancho Drive to approximately 275 feet west of Lacey Lane. Staff? <laughs> Laura Gunner, done for Public Works. This is the ordinance to levy the assessments for fiscal year 2013. Our assessments are $75,800. And that is an order. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak on this item? So please come forward to state your name for the record. Seeing none, Councilman? Same question I had on the previous one. I thought change in property taxes uh, is to do this. No, this this will just uh, levy the assessments against those who have uh, been paying for this maintenance along uh, Alta Drive. Yeah, they might pay a little higher just because of what we've done in a sense. Yes, but that would have, that would have already taken place. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I move for approval. Okay. Oh, David. Aye. 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 So moved. Next line item of business is bill number 2012-21 for possible action levies assessment for special improvement district number 1516, Fremont Street Maintenance District, Las Vegas Boulevard to 8th Street. Staff? This is the ordinance to levy the assessments for our commercial area valorization project on Fremont Street for fiscal year 2013. Our assessments for this next year are unchanged from the previous year at $252,402, and the bill is in order. Okay. Anyone wishing to speak on this item? If so, please come forward and state your name for the record. Seeing none, Councilman? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm for approval of this bill. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Bill number 2012-22 for possible action updates the licensing regulations and fees applicable to the apartment houses and clarifies zoning requirements pertaining to the conversions of multifamily apartment developments to co-op status staff. In fact, with the Department of Planning, the ordinance that you have before you is to make changes to both Title VI, which is the city's business licensing code, and Title XIX, which is the zoning code. The changes to the licensing code include changing the number of uh, units which require a license. 
Currently, any apartment complex with three units or more is required to have a business license. We're proposing to change that to five units or more. Also, what we're proposing to do is to change the licensing period from semi-annual to an annual basis. What that does is it saves the city costs in terms of having to do mailings and to mail out the license requirements. Also, another thing that this does is it adds the definition of a co-op. That's something that we haven't had in the code before, and so that we can properly address that in both our licensing and our zoning codes. So those are the three major changes that we're proposing as part of this, and we would request your support on this ordinance. Okay. If it, is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item? If so, please come forward, say your name for the record. Seeing that? Councilman? What is co-op? Yes. Co-op is a different form of condominium ownership, if you will. Rather than owning an individual unit of a building, a co-op has all of the owners owning the property in common, and they own a share of the property rather than an individual unit. Uh, we have one complex currently at 13th and Maryland, and I believe there's a couple of others. We actually have three. Three co-ops in town. Uh, and we had no way to really address them through either our zoning or our licensing code, so this will help us to address any future co-ops that we have. How does that differ from a condominium? Uh, again, a condominium, you own a unit. A In a co-op, you own a fractional share of the overall property. And why three units to five? Why the change? It's to help simplify our licensing process. Explain a little bit more than just simplify. I don't understand. Right. Karen Devilston, for the record, um, business licensing manager. Um, right now, those four units and and less are no fee uh, license. Uh, they are often owned by uh, an individual, a family. It's uh, out of state owners. Um, for example, for um, uh, let's see, for four plexes right now in, in the city, we have 1,281. We have 801 of them unlicensed. We only have 480 of them licensed. We go out, um, our enforcement goes out on a regular basis to try to locate these owners. They're, they're not businesses, they're not property managers. Often they're just a person, they may be an out-of-state person, and we can't find them. <laughs> Um, to to get them licensed. So, are are you saying that those individuals that have five or more units must apply for a business license? Correct. That's okay. what the that's what the code says, and that and that's what we're saying. That if it's five or more, it's it, if it's a business. What we're saying is those duplexes and those fourplexes, um, where it's just those four units or less. Uh, Right now, there, it is a no-fee license, so we are really just collecting data. We are a registration. So they still must apply if, if they're four or less, but no. it's a no-fee? No. Currently, that's the situation. Currently, they must apply, but it's a no-fee. What we, what we are saying is that really simply, this is a registration. Of, of those units. And does it have to be on the same property or could one own a unit at four different locations? Uh, they go by property. Okay. So it would be a, a, four, a four flex. Well, I have a question. Yes, Council. Well, why don't we have a fee? When did, we, when did the Council decide that there was no business license fee for these uh, smaller units? Absolutely. <laughs> Victoria Rosemore, Supervisor. I'm sorry, what is your name again? Victoria Rosemore, Supervisor in Business Licensing. Um, the apartment code is, is pretty complex. We are one of the rare um, cities in the United States that license anything less than five units. Okay, so this code change is basing, basically bringing us up to the standards nationwide. Um, what we originally did when I went back to do some research, and I had to go back to some very far codes to find out where, where this fee was actually established, 
May 18th of 1979, back when business licensing was under Title V, the fee hasn't been increased since that period of time. And during that time, um, there was some problems that Metro had identified with the crime. They, they actually created the crime-free multi-housing program, which I'm sure most of you are, are familiar with. And that required a landlord training program, okay, and work card requirement for management. At that time, the code was looked at and they did some amendments. When they did the amendments, at that time they decided we'd go ahead and register anything that was triplex or fourplex. There's no fee attached to that. It's a registration only, and it would be a one-time processing fee that was assessed so we could put it into our system. What has come through these years is we've identified that it's unenforceable, again, because there's nothing I can take away from them if there is a problem. And for citing criminally, um, our average for a citation under the apartment code, because we have to be able to physically identify an owner. A lot of these properties are in LLCs, corporations. I have to actually cite a person. I can't cite a corporation criminally, okay? And I have no civil penalties in Title VI that I can assess. So we're spinning our wheels for a registration only. And with the, the foreclosure situation as it is right now, it's been very costly to the city for us to go out, we, we inspect to see if it's occupied. Even if it is occupied and they're unlicensed, I can't displace those, those tenants. Most of them, uh, a lot of them are elderly in the downtown area. Um, we have a total for statistics, this will put it better in, in perspective. For triplexes, we have um, 191 triplexes. 22 of them are actually registered with us. 169 are not. All because we can't find or identify a responsible party. Then for fourplexes, we have 1,090. Unlicensed or unregistered, we have 632. I have 458 of those that are registered. Those registrations came from sweeps that we conducted with code enforcement in the fire department. When we go out all together, identify issues, usually brought to our attention from Metro. At that point in time, we do our very best to identify a responsible party so everybody knows who they need to either criminal, you know, or issue a criminal misdemeanor citation or civil penalties for those other departments. Now, as time has gone on, with there being a registration fee only, we're spending many man hours in trying to find these people that are out of state. We've met with the criminal attorneys to find the administrative warrants to make them accountable, but because of their workload also, it's very difficult because we have to be able to physically identify the person who's responsible when we get to court. We're unable to do that. We've never ever seen these responsible parties. It's all through mail. If we are corresponding back and forth, more, the majority of the time we are not. So, after evaluating nationwide how this stuff was being handled, we decided it was in the best interest of the city to bring this up to the standards nationally. Nationally, you begin licensing a complex at five units or more. And then that's what currently we would pursue for licensure, um, and we do that now. So it's not changing that part of the code. And the landlord training program, again, if they don't, they don't attend, they don't get a work card, again, criminally, I have to cite them. Who do I cite to, to effectively enforce this? There isn't a party I can cite. So basically, this is bringing it to, to national standards, making it more cost effective for us to pursue. Right now, currently, we don't even require a registration fee for, du for triplexes, I mean for, I'm sorry, du for duplexes. And we did a registration for triplex and fourplex. So we're asking to not register, require registration for those types of rental properties, and then we go after the, four the five units and more for cost effective. Uh, well, I have, my question revolves around cross-licensing problems. Uh, one of the ways, nine years ago, we created the bifurcated taxation system on property. 
3% increase or decrease max uh, on residential and 8% uh, on commercial. Who's to say that if we, now this is the only way we have of tracking these things, other than whatever the assessor might have, but the cross match of licensing is important in determining who is and who isn't commercial. Um, actually, we, we obtain those statistics through our utilities, through the sewer department. They have to count fixtures. They, they keep track of single family, triplex, duplex, uh, fourplex. They've got everything broke down, and including those that are non-taxable churches, um, non-taxable properties. All of that is kept track of through our fixture counts. So we can identify the properties and their use based on that. You mean the assessor can for purposes of property tax? Actually, the city does. When we pull any type of statistics for occupancy, usually we're using sewer statistics to, to identify. But how does the assessor know? The assessor, uh, the assessor assesses. We share in that property tax. And how do we know correct. the assessor is able to get the data, the correct data, you know, without a cross match? Of the assessor has the same correct. access to utility information as we do. So they can pull that exact same data just as we can. And why was it decided that no fee should be charged at all? That's going back to 1979. Okay. And yeah. I would assume it was, again, because nationally it wasn't an assessment anywhere. Uh, well, it's rare that there is a fee, a licensing fee for any for four units or less. It's rare. Uh, I I, uh, I was not here in 1979, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I can speculate that um, renting less fewer than than five units was akin to someone renting out rooms in their home. Mm -hmm. uh, many, many times, that's an investment for somebody, and and the times that that imposing that fee on a three or four unit complex brought out people who said, this is my life, this is how I pay my bills, is renting out two or three rooms. And so I think it was a, a political thought that we don't want to go there. Uh, certainly that can be addressed again, but I think that was probably where it came from. I was here, uh, Mr. Chairman, through you. I, I was here. I was attending council meetings. I was watching the council <coughs> try to react to the revolution in California on property taxes that happened in 1978. And in 79, the city was trying to adjust and frankly cut business licenses to appease certain members of the community to try to find ways to slow them down because of the, the uh, ballot questions that they were bringing. And in fact, then the legislature uh, enacted this uh, began the inaction, enactment of which passed finally in 81 of this horrible tax shift from property to sales. And so they were reacting at that time. That's what happened in 1979. It was uh, political exigencies of the moment, panicked local governments, panicked city councils, panicked county commissions. And those times have passed. And, and that's why I hesitate to say, well, it's okay just to increase the number of people we don't collect a license fee on. <laughs> I got a feeling that there is a level of some kind where you collect a fee where now enforcement becomes at least a break-even situation. Uh, you know, what do you think? I mean, uh, I don't know whether we want to increase more people that don't pay a fee of any kind. Of, you know, it is a business. Councilman, if I may just add a couple of comments. It's not that we're trying to increase the number from which we don't collect a fee. What we're trying to do is we're trying to do enforcement against properties where we don't collect fees. Currently, we don't collect fees from triplexes or fourplexes. My thought yet. is, well, why, why don't we reinstate the fees? That's yes, mm -hmm. where I was going. Okay. But again, we're going to have problems in doing that, as Victoria has mentioned, in identifying who the owner of that property is. Uh, we find it much easier to do it for the fiveplexes and above. All right, because they have management companies usually that are responsible for the properties. When you have five or more units, it's cost effective to hire a professional company to do so. As where fourplex and less usually manage their own properties. And they do this from out-of-state locations, California, we have some even out of the country. And so if I am unable to identify a person to issue a citation to, then it's unenforceable. And I, and I know it's not in the best interest, interest of of the public to displace those occupants and shut them down. So that's, you know, that's what everybody thinks. We get a lot of complaints and they say, well, shut them down. 
if I shut them down, then I have to relocate those people that are occupying well, those I'm not units. Sure I understand the staff's worried about that, but they're begging the question. The people that do own and do operate uh, little businesses and pay their little fees are being placed at an unfair advantage compared to these out-of-state landowners who are speculating on the property here in the city. And this is one way. There's a way to help find out who's buying our land here, who's driving up real estate values and causing a bubble. And frankly, that's what happened. You know, I don't know what that was. I can't support this right now until I know more about it. <laughs> yeah, see, I just don't know. I'll entertain a motion. something useful here, right? Motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. One? Opposed. So we'll move forward to City Council. Thank you. We're now down to public comments, public citizen participation. If there's anyone from the public wishing to speak under citizen's participation, please come forward and state your name for the record. Seeing none, any kind of motion or dismissal? I will be. Okay, on the paper? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.